Good evening. Welcome to Earth to the Other Side. My name is John, and tonight I have the honor of speaking with Rhonda McGrath, who had a near-death experience like myself back when she was quite young, six years old. Rhonda, welcome to the show. It's great to have you. Thank you. Thank you. I feel honored. <laughs> so what I'll do is I'll um, just sort of hand over the floor to you, and you can tell us your story. The floor is yours. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. So when I was five or six, I had a near-death experience. So... What happened was I have a rare heart condition, so my heart stops. At the time, I didn't know this. And um, so I thought it was a dream, but obviously it wasn't because you can remember every detail no matter how old you get. Um, So it started off with me walking with an angel on my right-hand side. Now, I believe it was an angel because that's the feeling I got at the time. Um, and we're walking along a pathway and I felt her hanging on my hand. So I felt like it was a female um, angel. Um, and I looked over to the left at one point and as we're walking and there was a pit and it had what I call people, peopleoids. Um, they just weren't quite human. Um, but they're reaching out like like this at me, and I felt really scared. So the angel said, "Don't fear, just look straight ahead." So I continued to go straight ahead, and we came to these big gates. Now the only way to explain them for me is um, they're in between gold and a dark wood. Um, they were very tall. I didn't see where they ended upwards or, or to the left or to the right, um, but they just opened up when when we arrived at them and we went through and the I saw a pathway to the left and a pathway to the right, but straight ahead there was all beautiful grass, greener than any green we can imagine. <coughs> and there was lions and tigers and they were just relaxed and just but I felt a fear and the angel said don't fear that they don't fear and I just the instant instantly didn't fear um and then the angel was gone so I was left there alone so I followed this pathway and I went over to the right hand side because I saw a waterfall over to the right hand side of where I was going um, and it was coming down um, as they were waterfall wood, um, but I couldn't see what it was coming off. Um, and then it just continued to go down. And I just looked down and it didn't end. And it really intrigued me. And I just, I remember standing there for quite a long time, um, what it felt like a long time, looking down at it, just trying to work out where it ended you know, just my little child mind. Um, and um, and then I just felt this immense presence behind me like a pool, um, like a magnet almost. Um, so I, I turned around and I saw this bright, bright light, very tall, um, but not bright so you, it hurt your eyes or anything like that. Um, the best way to explain it for me is an energy, a, a light that's an energy, and I felt immense love straight away, and that's all I felt. And I felt this person or this light was my father. I was home. Um, I felt home at home. It's the only way to explain it. Um, and I even um, remembered like. I don't think I remembered where I came from, in a sense. Um, so God said to me, um, you need to go back. And I went, no, I don't want to. And he said, you need to go back. And I went once again, no, I don't want to. And he said, your family needs you. So um, straight after that, I was back home. So I didn't get to go down that other pathway that I always wanted to go down. Um, since then, I've been psychic and have a mediumship ability. 
Um, I didn't like it for a very long time um, because a lot of the things that premonitions I were having um, were about my own life. And, yes, yeah, so I, I didn't like that. I also felt cursed because if I walked past someone, I could pick up things from them. So for a long time, I didn't like God. <laughs> um, now, I was brought up, brought up in a Pentecostal church after that. Sorry, it's part of my heart condition. Um, I did find out later on in life I had a heart condition and was born with it. And in fact, I don't have long to live. Um, so um, I've been wanting to, since since um, I got over my resentment, um, well, God came to me and said to me, um, why do you deny me when you met me? So he did say that to me. Um, why do you, why do you, why do you deny me when you met me? So I started to feel guilt about that, but still couldn't bring myself to tell anybody about my story. So the person who did know was my mother, um, because it was something I told her straight away. Um, and my mother was into the dark side a little bit. Um, at the time, doing seances and things like that. She says now, like, she knows it was a near-death experience, like she's been saying that for many years, because she went through the Pentecostal church but came out quite spiritual. Um, I, I, I studied the Bible. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you just real quick uh, before you continue, because you were saying um, he'd asked you, why, why would you deny me? when you've when you've met me when you met me yeah right. when when did that happen like that was during your near-death experience my near-death experience i met god so many years later when i was about 22 mm-hmm. um is when he said that to me oh i see okay sorry I just, yeah now i get it okay Perfect. sorry i probably didn't explain that very well That's okay. um, so it probably took another 10 15 years um, before I could talk about my story to anybody. Yeah. And I, I told a friend who's a scripture teacher and she said there's a story that she reads to the children and it sounds very much like mine. And she asked me if I'd read the book, but I haven't. I still haven't. <laughs> um, yeah, because I guess I, uh, I've i had the experience, um, but I'd like to explain this too. Um, probably about five years ago, um, there's a psychic on Facebook that I was following and for some reason I just knew I needed to go and see him um, and have a reading or, you know, so that my dad could come through. I just knew my dad was going to come through. He had passed away. Um, And probably about... Six months after following him, he he came to Coffs Harbour, um, a town not far from where I live. And um, so it was weird because I got up in the morning and I looked at Facebook straight away, something I never, ever do. Um, And that was the thing that I saw that he would be in Coffs. And so I rang my sister and I said, we've got to go. Dad's going to come through this psychic. And she's like, no, no, no. So it, it took a few phone calls um, to convince her. So she did come. Um, so a few relatives came through, and including Dad. And one of the, well, the very last thing Dad said through this psychic is, I'm waiting to show you around soon. So, and the reason he said that is because when he was dying, um, he was a born again Christian at the time. And I saw the fear in his eyes. I didn't understand it. Why are you fearing? Um, you know, you should know where you're going. Um, and so I just said, Dad, that that near-death experience that I had really happened. And you're going to a place that you're never going to want to come back here. Um, and you're going to a place that's absolutely beautiful, beyond imagination, and, um, and you're going home. And um, he just looked at me. He didn't say a word. Um, so that's that was him with his sense of humour, saying I'm going to show you around soon because he knows I've only seen a small portion of it. 
So, and he knows he's seen a lot more than I ever got to see. So I understood exactly what he was saying. So, um, which was, uh, you know, really, really special. And the fact that my sister came, um, she said, if you had told me, I wouldn't have believed you. But I have to believe it because I'm I'm here. So I, I also knew before I got told about my death sentence, I kept saying to my sister, I'm dying. I'm pretty sure I'm dying. And, um, <laughs> um, and yeah, I found out that I actually am. So, you know, your time's here for a reason. Yeah. And um, I know my reason, which um, because I had to ask God a few years ago because I was still pretty upset about being sent home. Uh, so back here, sorry. Um I have a large family and lots of sisters and one brother. And, um, you know, they, I didn't feel that they needed me. So I didn't understand what God was talking about. So I was laying out in the sun one day and I just said to God, I said, I want to know why, why did you send me back? You said my family needed me. They don't need me. Why did you send me back? And he said, your daughter. What about your daughter? Well, because I was only five or six when I had this experience, I never imagined he was talking about the next generation. So, and it could even her children as well, Um, my grandchildren. So, yeah, and it's and I believe very strongly that the cardiologist that I see. Um, a professors and uh, studying me to learn more about my disease. I believe I have full faith that God is going to help them discover a cure. So, and you know, and it won't be in my lifetime because they've made that very clear. Um, that's okay. I'm fine with that. Um, I do. I will live a little longer than they're saying, though. I do know that too. Um, <laughs> so. Um, yeah, so yeah, so I know my reason for being here now. And um yeah, it's wonderful. It's it's a really, really nice feeling. And with my and with my ability it is. Um I I do readings now for people through Facebook, you know, a page and that through Facebook, um, for free because I I believe well, every time I do a reading, I pray to God. I pray to God to give me what they need to know, you know. So um, not necessarily what they ask, but what they need to know. Um, and, yeah, so I just I love doing that. I can't always do it because I get so sick. Mm. So they'll learn from me with this So because they're putting me straight into the cardiac ward so they can learn from me so um yeah so it's a wonderful feeling knowing that the these cardiologists group of cardiologists are, are you know are looking for a cure for what I have and I, I wouldn't I'm not religious at all mm. I am spiritual very spiritual um yeah and I always have been since that age so I came back spiritual and had an understanding about things but I did need to read the bible because I was brought up that way um to go no but the god I met is pure love pure pure love no negativity whatsoever (laughs) no judgment just pure pure unconditional love and yeah, and I feel overwhelmed with that quite often. I speak to God on a daily basis, like a friend. Um, and because of my psychic abilities, he's done the thumbs up like that. You know, on Facebook, he thumbs up. Yeah. I saw a big blue thumbs up come in front of my face and I just laughed saying, oh, God's got a good sense of humour, and he does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, he kind of so has he to. to... <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I found that really interesting. That was funny. He's never done anything like that That's since really before. Cool. Yeah. No? That's really um, awesome. People call God she or, you know, I don't mind. And you know what? He has told me he doesn't care what people call him. 
He doesn't care whether it's, you know, Jehovah, um, God, all these other names that, are, you know, like I can rattle off. He really, really doesn't care because what I know is it doesn't matter what religion you are, we're all praying to one God because there is only one God, the maker. So, and that's the God I was privileged to meet at such a young age. And I and I regret turning away from him for so many years um, and not talking to him. But being brought up in the Christian religion, I didn't understand that you could talk to him like a friend. I thought you had to pray, you know, a prayer to talk to God. But I know now that's that's not true. Um you can talk to God just like I'm talking to you. I right find it now. so funny because the, what you're saying is so it rings, you know, resonates with me. It's it's like, do you need to pray to talk to yourself? What's the <laughs> difference? You know, yes, that's so true. It doesn't yeah. make any sense, really. Honestly, no, no, it doesn't. No, and 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 no offense to any religion. No, no, of course um, not. But Formality, I, I get, I, but. Mm. Yeah, yeah, like um, because I think there's a purpose for every religion, for every culture. Sure. So, um, you know, like, and, and that sometimes enlightens people to, you know, you know, they, they, they get their thing from it, you know, they still get to, to know God. Mm. Yeah, but the basic thing is I have had people from different religions say to me, you know, we all pray to the same God. And I, I go, yes, that's right. You know, I really get it when they say that. Yeah. Hmm. It's such an interesting connection that you made through the message and, you know, seeing the future, being six years old and being told this. It's like, ah, oh, the hairs were raising on my mm -hmm. arms, you know, when you told me that. So you spoke to your mother right away about it. And, and yes. she, she was really. She said it was a dream. Oh, she first thought it was a dream? So she had mixed feelings because she, first she yeah. said it was a dream and then she said, and then I think I told her more. And then she went, oh, you actually went to heaven. Oh, she said that. And that's how I knew I went to heaven, to the other side. Um, but on top of that, um, one of the cardiologists I was seeing many years ago, I just blurted it out for some unknown reason. It just came out of my mouth that, I had a dream and I went to heaven, you know, and just told him everything. And and he said, oh, yeah, you had a near-death experience. I didn't know there was a name for it, you know, so, yeah. which, yeah, it was really cool. I yeah. Love I love this yeah. world. I love this universe. It's really amazing. And I love your experience. It's uh, really cool. Like, who else did you talk to about this when you were when you were younger, aside from your mom? Is there anyone else? That you um, to? Mainly just one of my sisters. Mm -hmm. um Kathy um I spoke to her about it um I really kept it to myself so I mm -hmm. thought they might think I was crazy or whatever um so it wasn't until I came across other spiritual people that I was able to tell them you've spoken to your daughter about it though right I have yeah she doesn't believe in anything no that I say about God or the other side, she believes once we're dead, we're dead. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. She's going to get a shock when I pass away. <laughs> well, it's been such a pleasure speaking with you, and I really, really appreciate you uh, sharing your story. Well, I've got an invite for you. On yeah. the 1st of April 2025, I'm, I'm throwing a party to say, look, I'm still here. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, they gave me five years from the time I got my pacemaker. So, um, yeah, so that's on the 1st of April 2025, so next year. Well, I just keep uh, doing so it again. it's an honour to meet you. It's an honour to meet like you. Really it's been a real pleasure. Oh, thank you.